You know, I meet people all the time and they wonder, do I really have what it takes? Oftentimes we think that in our minds, sometimes we even verbalize it. There's one reason why I absolutely know that you have what it takes. You see, behind me there's people building houses and in the architect's mind, months ago, maybe even years ago, they first created that house mentally. They wrote it out with uh, blueprints. They thought about it in their head. And then they went and did the actual actions that it took to build that idea. You see, our brains are very interesting. Every single thing that we've ever created, anything that you see, your pen, your desk, your phone, it was created once in the designer's mind first. Then, secondly, in reality. And so when you're really asking others, do I have what it takes, here's the crazy thing. You've already created it once in your mind. For you to even think about that idea, for you to even articulate what's in your brain, you've already created it once. And so you actually already have what it takes to, to accomplish it. The second question though is, will you? That's a bigger question. And I'll just take you back to JFK at Rice Stadium for a quick moment just to illustrate a point. You see, JFK stood before the American public that day and he stood up and he talked about this landing the man on the moon. And it was fantastic. You think about the technology back then. I have more technology on this phone than all of NASA had back then. But see, he didn't let that stop him. He didn't say, well, gee, how am I going to do it? He didn't even go there. What JFK first did is he went with the why. You see, back in the day, in the early 60s, the Soviet and the space race, kids were diving under desks on a daily basis. There were sirens. In other words, he knew that to get a man on the moon first was key. He felt like it was uh, foundational and pivotal, pivotal for the entire future of, of the human history. And so when he stood up, see, we don't realize that he was actually talking about increasing taxes again, but the people cheered because he went first with the why, then he went with the what, then he went with the how. See, many times when we go to our ideas, when we think about what we want to do, we go first to the what, and then we say how, and then we say I don't have what it takes because we never fortified the why. We never dug deep and came up with reasons why this idea needed to work. So I wanna challenge you right now, if, if you want, grab a pen, write down the what. That's your idea, that's the first time you created it mentally. Then what you do is you fortify the why. You take a deep, deep dive and you come up with reasons and these reasons actually become ammo that when doubt and fear come up in your mind, they're like little weapons and you shoot them down and you say, hey, I got six or seven or 27 whys and it, it has to happen. And all those whys begin to shoot down the hows. The how really doesn't even matter. It, it truly doesn't. I've done tons of research and uh, I've looked at my own life, my, my clients' lives. The how does not matter at all. In fact, people will say that the how will appear many times. Or, you know, when the student's ready, the teacher appears. All this stuff relates to the fact that, you know what? Don't shoot yourself down before you even start. Don't even worry about it. Create it first mentally and then fortify the why, and then you'll come up with all kinds of other reasons how it will happen. So this is uh, Carrie Overrunner, be a soul on fire today. Take care.